this is the book by andy weir that book really showed the uh, the range of technologies right it introduces this talking about leveraging technology what's one indian fintech that you admire oh i love uh, zeroda uh, i think they have uh, built a built phenomenal technology uh, but they reached an outcome which is not like you know suddenly if you remove the path the outcome will not exist top few chosen from the from premier institutions right booster confidence boosting uh, measure and uh, and even at that time one uh, challenge for us was uh, explaining what just pay did so one bank uh, asked us 40 lakh rupees another bank of uh, asked us 35 lakh rupees right it was a bit of an angel funding which kept us going right and that money was not enough to go and uh, uh, get this license having a lot of inertia from moving away from our business model to pursuing it, uh, it through a completely different business model right uh, with uh, having a small desk probably from a tbs capital or a mahindra finance or a bajaj finance right and we chose to do credit cards in today's episode we join ramanathan arvi founder of the embedded finance startup hyperface after building tech for the dig- digital payments startup jaspay and as its founder ram is now building an end to end tech stack to enable customized credit products at scale Join us as we talk about Ram's journey from engineering at Amazon to embracing fintech as a 2x founder. Ram, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Avril. It's fantastic to be here. Uh, would love to uh, cover a range of topics uh, pertaining to the Indian uh, payments ecosystem. Uh, look forward to this interaction. So, Ram, we'll start with the rapid fire. Um, you know, it's a good way to warm up uh, and get some interesting answers. If you could be a professional in any other field unrelated to what you do today, what would it be and why? I would have probably ventured into acting. Uh, okay. It is. Uh, it was a uh, childhood talent that I never actually nurtured. Uh, but uh, but I think that would have uh, that that I still carry that passion. Never acted on it. But okay. I think that never acted would on have the been one passion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 what sort of films do you think you would have or shows where where would you see yourself it's it's a uh, uh, be it whether the films or any other medium right i think uh, that wouldn't matter it is it's just that uh, uh, i i think that uh, you know why i love acting why i love that is uh, it's very easy to to actually escape from the reality field and then project into a different in, into a different field altogether right and then uh, that's that's phenomenal right and and of course that requires a, a, a complete shift from the reality into a different uh, a plane altogether right so that's what uh, is very interesting uh, about uh, uh, about the 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 be it the movies or be it any kind of web series you know the medium doesn't matter Interesting. Uh, so, with the AI craze these days, ChatGPT or Bard? Any preferences? Which one's your favorite? I've been using ChatGPT for uh, for quite a while now for a variety of tasks. Uh, I've not uh, I've not really actually uh, gotten too much into Bard. Okay. Yeah, so for me, it's ChatGPT. <laughs> What's the last book that impacted you deeply? So um, this is the book by Andy Weir. Uh, he is uh, he is the one that wrote the martian right so it was his work that uh, that impacted me deeply and i think uh, i always uh, wanted to be a nerd i think uh, uh, you know if, if when you are an entrepreneur it's very difficult to be a nerd right so that's that book really showed the uh, the range of technologies right it introduces this uh, it, it reintroduced to, to me the range of technologies and the challenges that we as humans face on uh, on this earth right so that is very very fascinating and you know in, in a way it also it actually goes back to that uh, question that you asked about what what is the other thing that you would have done but again you know uh, we are talking about the possibilities right so when uh, when it is about the movies or when it is about the the fiction it's it allows you to think in different possibilities right and mm. uh, and when you are in uh, space and in exploration Uh, you are in survival mode right again you have to think of 
different uh, possibilities right and the leverage technology as much as possible talking about leveraging technology what's one indian fintech that you admire oh i love uh, zeroda uh, i think they have uh, built a built phenomenal technology uh, although i in uh, the kind of uh, um, uh, the the room for improvement that uh, that they have every night uh, which allows them to actually you know turn off the systems and then improve it and then deploy the code mm. and then in the morning you can turn it on right like uh, but but but, uh, but no uh, many transactional systems do not have that luxury mm. uh, like particularly when coming from payments industry right very interesting uh, you mm. just can't afford to turn it off mm. right <laughs> but uh, but i think zero the talk i mean they built they've taken on a lot of challenges and they've built many things uh, ground up uh, thinking from first principles right uh, it's it's very fascinating to see a company like that challenge the norms and uh, be true to their thinking and and achieve really great stuff with tech what's your favorite hiring question i would really uh, try to understand a person uh, by seeing what they've learned recently so the question that i ask all of all the people is that look outside of the work what is it that you have learned out of your own interest in the past 6 months right that is uh, that is really uh, something that will uh, show us the the range which the candidate really can bring uh, right what their areas of interest are and even with uh, with regards to technology are they self motivated enough to go and learn next one is what's one truth that few people agree with you on we consider us as the software uh, uh, you know back office of the world uh, but uh, uh, but i think that india has the potential to build its own browsers and operating systems and databases and uh, and uh, network protocols right which we've uh, i don't think we've had the confidence to go out and build right uh, i think india will in the next decade uh, invest a lot Uh, bring out its confidence in technology and then build these fundamental softwares right which are which which do not have anything to do with business applications right but these are the fundamental layers of uh, technology right which we've not invested so much in the past decade i think the next decade we will see that and but uh, but very very few people actually agree that uh, we have the ability to build those why do you think we need to build those versus using you know other countries tech see tech is always uh, it's uh, there's a lot of path dependency in technology right it's sometimes there is no particular reason or logic that uh, that is required for us to do things right even even if not for simple let's say for the problems that we face in in uh, our day to day things right even if we are not driven by those it is important to keep dabbling in system software and in different technologies just so that we build that muscle we, if we don't build that muscle at all right then we will never be in the cutting edge of innovation right so that, that's why it's very important to be very careful with what we are outsourcing right and and fundamental softwares like these are again you know tomorrow uh, if, if you look at why a uh, chat gpt like company emerged in the us and why not in india because they they have invested in in ai for so many decades now right and finally it leads to one outcome and we still don't know whether that outcome is going to actually uh, uh, you know be meaningful uh, but they reached an outcome which is not like you know suddenly if you remove the path the outcome will not exist so the path is important which is why those investments into the fundamental things are extremely important like today we are talking about uh, smartphones but 20 years from now would the form factor tend to be the same smartphone i am not so sure right it could be a different completely different form factor but that form factor will require its os as well right and if we don't actually have the knowledge of how to build operating systems then tomorrow whatever that form factor be it right we will still be reliant on somebody else to actually give us the operating system understand Oh, that's awesome, um, and it's a it's a good segue into your evolution. Uh, I think you're talking about the evolution of uh, technology and the paths that people need to take to become good at technology. What what has the path been like for you 
what were early days how did you start um and you know talk us through your journey at just pay and then finally at hyperface absolutely look um so right in the early days like i was employed with uh, amazon uh, right out of the college right and uh, the uh, the idea of being employed by a multinational that's extremely fascinating for anybody from the middle class in india right and and particularly uh, very competitive and uh, a great brand like amazon uh, and ultimately you are amongst say the uh, top few chosen from the from premier institutions right so that's amazing and and uh, uh, what drove me was uh, was this passion for technology right even uh, even in amazon uh, the kind of problems that the company would take on would be very very difficult to solve once right and uh, this was also the time when sachin and bini bansal were in uh, amazon they were at amazon as well and they left uh, amazon to start uh their own and we saw the launch of uh, iphone as well right it was it was around that time as well and uh, the uh, the possibilities that smartphones could bring right that also drove a, quite a few from that amazon batch to leave the job and then start a company right so it's kind of that entrepreneurial bug was going around right and uh, uh and i also left the job at amazon and joined a, a startup a very early stage startup at that time when the word fintech was not coined uh, in 2008 right i joined one of the fintech companies which is again started by someone next like amazon but amazon seattle uh, and uh, uh, that was in the financial services the idea is to how to give you the courage to join a startup uh, when it was barely even a thing uh startup as a right. concept correct yeah the industry did not just did not exist at all right but we saw that uh, one one was the motivation of you know seeing a lot of people around us do that right that was that was number one uh, uh, uh confidence building measure let me put it that way right second is the uh, the belief that uh, in india uh, technology will be adopted in a big way uh digitization was just starting at that time right india was not such a huge market but the uh, but the belief at that time was that look this is a requirement just like roti kapda makan right it's it's a it's a very basic uh, requirement which ultimately will reach the masses right so that was another confidence uh, building measure right and obviously for a startup to succeed too many variables will have to so many variables will have to uh come uh, will have to work out right but uh, but the driving motivation for me was that look uh, this is a once in a lifetime kind of an opportunity uh and uh, people around me were doing this uh, so that was a booster confidence boosting measure and uh, then uh, you know i was thinking about uh, going to the us versus uh, say uh, building something in india right and i uh, decided to stick it out here right uh, because i believe that the india story will play out in a big way right but at that time like you you've got to go back in time and see 2008 how things were right things were really really different than what it is today yeah i was just saying if you can you know i think you're talking yeah. through the journey i was just going to ask you what one yeah. like yeah so from from uh, that company so that company uh, is bank bazaar uh, they okay. continue to exist till today right and uh, after about three and a half years i saw that uh, a lot of foundational elements in bank bazaar was built and uh, the company had a lot of momentum uh, so i got bored at that time and then uh, wanted to uh, try something else right and uh, uh, there was this colleague from bank bazaar vimal who I, i used to know from the amazon days right and we both used to discuss various ideas right vimal was a great teacher and we felt that education was uh, it can be much better fundamental education can be much better in india right so we thought okay we'll, we'll do something in uh, education right uh, but we did not do it uh, and it was again at that time i had the opportunity again to go to the us versus stick it out in india 
uh, and decided again to remain here um, and build something in india right uh, how the idea of payments came about was that we uh, we had friends from uh, companies like flipkart and infibeam of course and uh, everyone complained about the sad state of uh, payments uh, uh. technology in the country right and uh, uh, we felt that one click payments was such a massive success for amazon right. uh, that it it was a it was a tech, it was both a technology challenge and a security infosec challenge as well right and we felt it it's a technology problem that needs to be solved better in india if india's e-commerce move has to gain a lot of momentum right so that's what led us to uh, build uh, justpay in the year 2012 but the idea for uh, building uh, in digital payments uh, came in 2011 itself for me and vimal after different discussions with uh, uh, friends from amazon flipkart infibeam these kind of companies right and uh, in 2012 we set it up in 2012 april we set up the company in chennai and uh, we um, uh, we hired a few interns and started uh, in a small typical uh, you know garage like startup right mm. we rented out a house and we started there right and uh, a year from then we uprooted ourselves and then came to bangalore because hiring was very difficult in chennai uh, if uh, we had to really convince a person to join us uh, that was still the easier battle uh, but we had to convince uh, sometimes the girlfriends uh, parents <laughs> yeah. in laws right um, Uh, that was very <laughs> challenging <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. easier to sometimes raise funds than hire uh, very smart folks right yeah, yeah. Um, so we came to bangalore and uh, in bangalore obviously we found uh, a lot more willing talent to join startups right thankfully you know they had seen successes at uh, of companies like flipkart uh, in mobi right and and so they were uh, there were a lot of folks willing to try out early stage startups right so that's why uh, we made that move when we came here and uh, slowly we grew right but we were still uh, until that point in time angel funded only uh, our real funding happened in uh, 2016 uh, uh, late 2015 uh, at that time right and axel partners was our uh, uh, vc who invested in us who believed in our story and they invested in us right and from there on uh, the company uh, had a lot of momentum i think we had uh, taken a very fundamental bet and we did a f- lot of things correctly we did a f- lot of mistakes as well but i think uh, more decisions were correct and uh, that led us to uh, build a solid company right that was grounded on uh, solid principles um, rather than let's say you know uh, looking at different metrics right so we were we were looking at what is the actual value what is the uh, what do we define as actual culture right uh, we got a lot of things correctly done at that time uh, and now uh, just pay is a uh, pretty good uh, uh, pretty solid outcome right and and even at that time one uh, challenge for us was uh, explaining what just pay did right and for a long time everybody thought that we were in the money moving business right but we were actually building technology we were not touching the money at all right uh, uh that the idea was to bring one click payments experience in india right it was not about let's say can we move money from uh, account a to account b right uh, we gave ourselves the uh, that constraint that look let's look at only this as a technology problem and then solve it not about the the money moving problem right and uh, we were able to because of that we were able to build a lot of tech innovation right uh, and, and that allowed us to just walk us through that why did you decide to focus on on just the tech part and were the times when you were tempted to kind of get into the money moving part or how did you stick to your initial decision and can you explain yeah, so, that also to like what do you mean by money moving and uh, what were you doing specifically which was not money moving right right there were few logical reasons and uh, then there were also the money reasons as well 
so th- there is uh, in the payments world the business of moving money is requires a license called payment facilitator uh, at that time right uh, today it is uh, it is now the rbi has put a lot of uh, uh, framework to this but back then uh, the that time what was existing was a payment facilitator license right and and the payment facilitator license requires an upfront payment uh, of about uh, 25 30 50 lakhs 1 crore depends on the banks which can actually uh, uh, set that kind of a security deposit right or a, or a one time fee set up fee right and we didn't have that kind of money right that was one reason second reason was that uh, uh, in in india uh, even companies like flipkart uh directly signed up with the banks so banks were the gatekeepers to the technology and banks actually signed up uh top merchants like uh, flipkart directly uh and they were selling the same technology to companies like uh just pay raise pay pay you right so those, there was a structural advantage that the banks had rather than let's say uh, private companies like raise pay pay you Uh, just pay having right uh, this is not true in uh, a market like the us where the banks do not directly participate in the payments uh, processing business at all right so so what this means is that suppose let's say uh, you are flipkart right and if i am hdfc i would come directly to you and then i will say look why don't you sign the payments agreement directly with me right and i will give you better rates right and it was very difficult for say a just pay to sign up with a bank and offer a better rate than what the bank is directly offering the merchant right that just was not possible at all right so we felt that this structural advantage would mean that banks would always be competing right and and that is one competition that too much competition is something that both me and vimal did not take a liking to right we wanted to give ourselves the ability to say that look what exists today we are 10x better than that right and and so then we went back to defining what the problem is right and that's where we said that look let the banks continue to move money uh, let icici hdfc access let these banks go and directly sign up all the merchants but what we will do is that we will only provide them with the technology to uh, provide uh, the merchants with the technology to uh, manage payments on top of these right so it was a layer on top of the actual payments processing system right uh, uh, which also eliminated the money movement responsibility from our end it it simply becomes the bank's responsibility right uh, so that's the reason that is the reason uh, the other part i just said uh, so one bank uh, asked us 40 lakh rupees another bank of uh, asked us 35 lakh rupees right and we didn't have that and uh, both me and vimal then had to even after liquidating our pf we were not able to meet that uh, obligation so we tried uh, installment payments and all that but banks were too smart to <laughs> consider those so uh, so we didn't have that uh, luxury as well right and like i said we were not uh, vc funded uh between 2012 to 2015 it was it was a bit of an angel funding which kept us going right and that money was not enough to go and uh, uh, get this license you know that's that's fascinating um so a bit of necessity a bit of innovating and and also a bit of just having those right principles in place but to, uh, walk us through kind of the next step in your journey right you how did you decide to leave just pay and start hyperface and walk us through that transition it must have been a big decision yeah that's a that's a big decision uh, i was very confident that uh, uh, the solution that we built in just pay right the same problem uh, many parts many different countries were also facing right there was a time in fact uh, in singapore when uh, the payment methods used to be say visa mastercard and then after if you come during a particular time after one year right then the two payment methods became 20 payment methods uh, if, uh, and and let me explain that right so if you today if you have to get a sense of how many payment methods are in india existing in india right 
you will still get a subset but you go to book my show and then you can see number of payment methods right uh, wallets and uh, and pay later and cards and net banking like so many right plethora of payment options are there right and and uh, uh, probably we are the most diverse country uh, in terms of the payment number of payment methods that are out there right so any time when uh, in a country the number of payment methods increase the complexity for the merchants would increase because servicing different payment methods across different providers on a common uh, uh, common framework within a common framework is extremely difficult it requires a lot of commitment to technology and uh, being able to build technologies to uh, to uniformly service the customers right and and uh, Uh, it is that difficulty which just pay eliminated for the merchants in a big way right and and i was actually uh, uh, pulling the company in the direction of expanding internationally but at that time uh, uh, of course we had our differences and we should every founding team the members they should have their differences so my uh, uh, co-founder disagreed and uh, my board also disagreed at that time and they did not want to invest in international expansion at that time right and viral would have probably seen a lot of these such boardroom discussions <laughs> right yes uh, it's uh, it's it's never an easy decision right uh, these kind of uh, strategic ones right and i felt that uh, in india we've uh, achieved great momentum and uh, the foundation uh, was really built really really well and but the opportunity ahead of us in uh, building our financial ecosystem in india and building technology which will work for us and also which we can take outside india was massive it was just too massive to ignore right so that's that's the reason why i i felt that uh, uh, it is uh, it's a big opportunity too big one to ignore and it's something that uh, drove me to uh, to think about starting again uh building technology here and then selling it to the rest of the world right that's how that's one of the driving forces for me to start hyperface and uh, uh and that's one of the most important uh, important targets as well which we we uh, at hyperface are pursuing as well quickly before we jump into the hyperface journey and the problem that you're solving i would like to go through that in detail can you you mentioned that you know you got a lot of things right but there were some mistakes i would lo- i would love for you to kind of just touch on some of your bigger mistakes at just pay and what you learned from it right right actually uh, uh, it, it was mainly the uh, markets that we ignored even within india right uh, the top end of the market obviously captures more than 50 percentage right i'm talking about the uber ola swiggy zomato flipkart amazon right these these top uh companies right but at that time we we also saw that there was an emergence of e-commerce companies in the tail end of the segment as well right but the tail end of the segment requires uh commoditizing the payments business as a whole which is what razor pay was able to do very very effectively right we never gave ourselves the opportunity to even venture into that right and and uh, the the same lens which we applied for enterprise business would have not worked for the sme business right and and in in fact even things like something as trivial as doing search engine optimization you wouldn't want to do that if you are an enterprise business right? look at build desk's website right there's no seo there's nothing it is it is a website from the ages but look at the business that they are doing right uh, but seo is required if we are going after the sme business right and so it requires a plethora of different tech investment building shopify plugin magento plugin right and, yeah and yeah, interesting and uh, it's much a totally broad segment enterprise versus this sme segment it's yeah yeah, yeah. it's not the same b2b at all <laughs> correct so that's one market which i feel that we ignored business wise right then uh, then the other market uh, that we ignored was the emergence of qr so we applied the same just pay lens of let's say operating on top of the banks for uh, acquiring merchants in the physical upi qr as well so this was before the emergence of bharat pay right? again our business strategy was incorrect we should have actually gone down the path of uh, directly acquiring uh, these businesses and 
figuring out the most commoditized way, right? How do you how do you spend less than say two hundred three hundred rupees to acquire one merchant one Kirana store uh, store, right? That is a challenge, right? And that again, th- that was another place where we misread, we absolutely misread the situation, and then we uh, uh, we just uh, we were probably having a lot of inertia from moving away from our business model to pursuing it uh, it through a completely different business model, right? So th- these are these are I would say very costly mistakes and very, probably billion dollar mistakes, right? And uh, because the opportunity was uh, turned out to be pretty pretty large as well, right? Uh, we were too slow to market ourselves. So one of the most important thing in uh, in B two B businesses is having a, a keen sense of product marketing. This again, uh, you know, I think we have a, we have uh, this also is one of the things that we should learn from the West. How do you package things very, very, you know, very substantially better manner? Right. Uh, we lack those skills. We should have invested early on itself, and we should have projected. Uh, we were creative. We were a category creating company. Today, if you if you look at the world everywhere, if you look at payment orchestration is a thing. Right. It's a big opportunity recognized by the VCs as well. Right, uh, but at that time, the that category did not exist at all, and we were the company, uh, probably the first in the world to build that system, right? And uh, uh, but we did not market it well. We did not invest in uh, in doing it really well, uh, where the other person can see it and perceive that okay, this is fantastic, right? Our technology really worked fantastically, right? But we didn't package it to be very attractive, right? uh I, and i think that would have naturally motivated us perhaps to sell it to the to the whole of india right because our clients like here in flipkart and other companies right never really demanded us to go and build fantastic dashboards and analytics reports and things like that right while we would do all of that as back office things right uh, so so the packaging element was missing and and perhaps this is one uh a structural disadvantage of being an enterprise company i think i think a lot of enterprise companies are uh, you can you can say they're guilty of this but uh, uh, but to their own detriment as well or you're limiting this was self limiting right we we could not sell the story better to the vcs at that time right and uh, i feel that between 2015 to 20 uh, and after covid happened you know things were very different but during that time i think we we were not able to sell the story very well to the vcs what that would mean what that would mean is that uh, the market outcome is really large but if we are under invested in technology then we are limiting our growth right and and uh, uh, if we don't have money then we have to under invest in technology to survive right so uh, so i think that period was very critical and uh, uh, and we did not do enough in uh, marketing. That's one another big mistake, I would say. That's quite interesting. I mean, fascinating. Uh, quite a few learnings there, and and it's almost contrary to conventional wisdom, where you know people typically think you want to focus on one niche. And uh, but I think when you guys got scaled, there were a lot of opportunities that you were capitalized on. So so fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. Now moving on to your hyperphase journey, can you first of all tell us what is the problem that you're solving exactly and Right, and then talk about how you went about. Uh... Absolutely, absolutely. Look, uh, in hyperphase, we are we are mainly solving the problem of embedded banking. So, how do you take a banking product or a financial product and then put it into a commerce workflow or any other workflow for that matter? Right. To give you an example, and and it's not like it is new, right? It's been existing. Bajaj has been doing this for many many years now. Like you go to a electronic shop or you go to a two wheeler shop right uh, all these uh, you look at all the different two wheelers and brochures and uh, cc's and what what not right but at the end of the purchase decision there is a person who is sitting there uh, with uh, having a small desk probably from a tvs capital or a mahindra finance or a bajaj finance right selling the two wheeler loan Today in India, if you see, seventy-five percentage of two-wheelers are sold on finance, right? Uh, and and this 
this is in the physical world this is the embedded uh, model of packaging uh, a financial product when a purchase decision is being made right and and bajaj also has done the same in the commerce world as well now if you see if you take the whole thing and then if you project it to the internet right where uh, let's say a costly item is being purchased by a customer um, uh, how do you embed in the checkout journey uh, finance product so that you combine the two and then the purchase decision happens right uh, this is this is a in the simplest form this is embedding right uh, but today if you if you look at uh, many different uh, many there are many different workflows in customer context for instance i'll tell you this right something like goal based saving right let's say you know i want to purchase a house but i don't have enough money today and but i need to save up for the down payment and then i'll purchase the house after a year right now there are lifestyle apps or or financial uh, pfm apps which can potentially build this product right they can offer a recurring deposit as a as an option uh, and allow you to save for a particular purpose and then ultimately redeem it for making that purchase right uh, now i i gave you a, a simpler a different context right in different context in a different product being embedded think about let's say today uh, uh, the lack of escrow systems right uh, where two strangers are transacting and then you need an escrow product with to actually be in between uh, so that the actual transaction can happen in a much more trustworthy manner otherwise there is a lack of trust right uh, b2b marketplaces this this kind of a product will be very useful so in in a lot of times where transactions are happening or transactions are about to happen a financial product really makes it uh, uh, happen in in a smoother fashion in a more trustworthy fashion as well right so uh, so embedded banking is a is is very vast there are many different products there are many different contexts but ultimately it is about taking a banking product be it a prepaid card be it a credit card be it a fixed deposit be it an escrow product right embedding that in the context of the business like right? this opportunity is too big but today the bells and whistles the basic plumbing that is needed in order to do this in a secure manner because in banking everything is about trust right and and it is very hard to build trust but it is very easy to lose as they say right and uh, banks have to be extremely careful about information security right in the physical world the damage is very limited to the to the uh, by any malicious actors if they want to do this you know at best you can go and you can loot a branch but that is not going to bring down a bank but if the bank's infosec system is compromised then it's a it's a single entry point to the to the whole of it right so the banks will have to be extremely careful in in uh, doing this embedded banking business right and and obviously you know you can over index on that and then build some system which is ridiculously tough for anybody to adopt and use right uh, uh, but you can do so with uh, with uh, mindful creation of the tools and technologies which will enable others to use but in with all the guardrails in place right so that's important and that's where we saw that it was a big opportunity lack of technology uh, basic technology plumbing was missing and which can actually enable a lot of business use cases for the banks to happen in a much more efficient way right and and that's what led us to start hyperface uh, which is uh, where we work very closely with banks build these technologies and then bring even client business prospects also to them but we particularly chose credit cards these credit cards is a very scalable product right and uh, in credit cards if you see uh, i'll tell you why uh, particularly credit card as well right in uh, in credit card there's a very uh, uh, very particular uh, brand of credit cards very particular variant of credit cards known as the co-branded credit cards now uh, amazon has one swiggy has one flipkart has one most of the commerce companies have one there are also use cases beyond uh, the regular b2c commerce uh, for instance a large company can work with a bank and then give co-branded credit card to its uh, uh to its distributors 
right to purchase on credit can be a close look Correct. credit card with a very very different uh, packaging of the interest rate as well right so uh, so uh, credit cards are very versatile and they can grow significantly large uh, in terms of uh, the number of uh, products that you are issuing right and it also is very lucrative for the banks as a business right? their uh, their returns tend to be a lot higher right uh, and, and in india today uh, when we started uh, hyperface about 15% of credit cards were co branded credit card in a country like the us that number is 45% of course us is a much more mature market they've been issuing credit cards for many many more years than us uh, uh, but in india also we feel that in fact the credit co branded credit cards can form more than 50% of the of the market share right and and of course uh, that requires a lot of investment in technology so that digital distribution can be enabled right and and which is why we chose credit cards is massively scalable uh it requires a lot of tech investment there's a lot of innovation portion which is needed as well for credit cards right and and uh, it's a it's a emerging theme on the other hand if you look at what we eliminated we did not uh, want to do personal loans uh, if you see personal loans today there are a lot of fintech companies there are a lot of uh, commerce companies b2b companies offering personal loans or business loans as part of their workflows and particularly personal loans i think we have uh, we, they've been growing on steroids like the small ticket personal loans right they've been uh, growing really uh, in a fascinating way uh, but we we chose not to do that uh, and we chose to do credit cards uh, because it's a relationship product rather than a one one and done kind of a product right and and so it's much more challenging but it's much more rewarding as well right and and the scalability was very clear to us Uh, distribution will be digital uh, predominantly it will be digital rather than physical and that requires tech investment and with godrails building a lot of this with uh, a lot of infosec godrails in place right which is which is the strength for us right and uh, we complement this right uh, banks are very good at doing financial products uh, we are not great uh, at that uh, we are very good in technology uh because we are able to hire from the premier institutes and uh, banks are not able to do so uh, not able to pay top dollars to engineers right and uh, and that's why the the complement it was very complementing and uh, great synergy right for us right so that that's the business we are in uh, would we not do other products i think in due course of time we'll probably venture into other products as well because that's a very that's an evolutionary force right uh, and we also see the same theme playing out uh, in different countries as well so uh, once we have built all the technologies here we will definitely uh, definitely venture outside india as well right because the because it's a it's a common evolutionary theme uh, uh, it happened in the us now it's happening in india and it will happen in other countries as well so it is it is absolute no brainer to actually leverage our technology elsewhere and talking about technology I mean that's been a major theme you were even involved in building the early infrastructure for UPI how, how is this technology innovating you know with BNPL and credit on UPI now coming up a lot has been happen, happening what are some of the things that you're most excited about and and you know maybe more generally that our audience would you know should pay attention to absolutely uh, again look look the way the lens that we actually uh with which we see these things is today for issuing one single credit card a bank nearly spends about 3000 rupees right and and in singapore i know the affiliate marketing uh, number is tends to be about 300 dollars singapore dollars right so the customer acquisition cost is extremely high but it's a uh, you know it's not so much of a problem say for the economy like a singapore or the us because the recovery path uh, is clear for them but in india because our total spends that happen on the card tends to be still lower even at a ppp level when we compare right uh, it is lower than uh, developed economies right so which means that our cac has to come down 
for banks to be able to profitable uh, to be profitable let me let me tell you why it matters even more for us uh, from a growth standpoint right so the salary is from top 1 percentage when you come to 10 percentile of the of the earning person in india right because of uh, the total transacting capacity of uh, per capita in the country because down as we go from the top of the pyramid into the middle class say a family that is earning 50000 their ability to spend across say mandatory and discretionary items outside of their rent and school fees on such credit products uh, is probably going to be less than 10000 rupees on a monthly basis right and there is a big need right and and uh, for a bank to make money by uh, where the rotating credit tends to be only about 10000 rupees uh, that that equation will not work out if the upfront cost is significantly high the cac is very high right so the cac has to come down and the only way cac will come down is by uh, uh, channel partnerships being uh, acquired uh, through digitally right and and rather than let's say uh, uh, trying to do uh, physical and kiosks at multiple places that just does not work right and and digital partnerships will lead the way for us to give credit uh, give lower value credit and still be profitable right and and uh, that is why embedded banking makes a ton of sense not just for the current uh, scheme of things as they are but for the future growth as well like 10 years from now when we see the way this will grow uh, the shape of the product will change from what say a credit card is new products like bnpl and credit line on upi will emerge will probably uh, bring in more efficiency uh, in distributing credit and ma- managing credit uh, uh, for the banks and then we will see the prevalence of let's say lot of customers a uh, lot of middle class customers also coming into the into credit inclusion right and and this is of course you know uh, we not only we should not only look at credit card as a product but even a product like a fast tag uh, other financial products as well right cac cannot be a whole lot high in india right and and uh, uh, doing this profitably would mean banks will have to do a lot more innovation right and obviously they are committed to doing this they are in this business right and uh, uh, but we are enablers we believe that enabling the banks for doing digital partnerships um is very fundamental to the future growth of consumer uh, uh, banking business understand um and what are next steps for you where are you today in terms of you know scale or anything that you can share what does you know the next 5 years look like right. for hyperface right. see we've achieved a meaningful uh, milestone in credit cards we have uh, we have launched a few co-branded credit card programs as well uh, very very important to get the first few uh, launches because then the formula can be applied uh, irrespective of uh, the next partnership the n plus 1 launch is always easy first launch is very difficult right so we've crossed that stage and uh, we've also been lucky enough that a lot of banks have lapped up our product for their own existing portfolio of consumers as well uh, Uh, this is uh, we have i think when uh, these implementations will go live we would have achieved a market share of about 5 percentage uh, that is uh, that's very uh, it's very large for a company like ours right um, and we've uh, we've been able to achieve this with very very efficient usage of our capital it took us time because there was a lot of turbulence in the credit market as you would know uh, after covid uh, rbi really put in lot of guidelines and frameworks right for the banks to meaningfully engage with uh, uh, partners uh, channel partners and different products uh, right and and so there was a lot of uh, tech investments that had to be done uh, over the past few years but i think we are uh, we are better off having done all of that now we can focus a lot more on distribution and growth right uh, g- growth i think we will we will get to the growth stage but i am not in a hurry i i would never be in a hurry to get to the growth stage 
until we get the fundamentals correct right and uh, and once the fundamentals are in place growth will come right uh, growth does not does not equate as equate to success for me right it is uh, it is getting those fundamentals right and then being able to replicate that naturally organically without us doing much right that is what success is right and and i think we have crossed that stage of getting our fundamentals correct now we will focus on uh, on growing the business understand and just to close out and why we call this founders unfiltered what's one piece of unfiltered feedback that you received in your journey as an entrepreneur that really changed your perspective and brutal honest is 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 good yeah i think the um uh, think big is the is the, is one of the f- unfiltered f- feedback that we've gotten right because that's as startup founders uh, we can get too passionate about the product that we are building right and uh, and seek that customer happiness right we see them using but ability to uh, to actually go after really large problems and then and then building say at india scale for instance this is what we were able to grasp when we worked with upi right and uh, uh, any solution that we uh, this, this is in, interacting with folks like nandan nilakini and i spirit folks right i think that that feedback stayed with us right uh, any problem that we want to solve any problem that i want to solve i tend to look at this from both the perspectives is this the problem for the person right and then is this problem big enough that it makes sense for us to go and solve this problem right so now now i always tend to think uh, along uh, from that perspective sometimes it is uh, it also is not uh, it, it blindsides you you may ignore certain problems so you got to be very careful when we are thinking like that but uh, it's much better to filter out the problems that do not matter right and uh, focus on the ones that actually do matter and this is a yardstick this is a measure for uh, doing so awesome ram thank you for joining us and educating us so much about the indian fintech space we hope our listeners will learn about the ecosystem from this chat thank you thank you everyone thank you mazin nice nice uh, interacting with you uh, great thanks for the opportunity